and welcome to Marquette Live. We hope you all have been continuing to stay warm even though April is just around the corner. Let's also talk about how I just walked here in with an umbrella and it is no longer raining. Anyways, we have a great show lined up for you tonight filled with some fashion formal secrets, girl talk, pop culture, and more. I'm Kira Collins and this is Marquette Live. It seems like in every one of my classes, there's at least one girl who has an internet, internet browser pulled up, not with class notes, but with dresses. That is right, we're in full fashion and formal season, whether it be Greek life formals or banquets. Our favorite fashionistas have some tips and tricks of what you should wear to these upcoming events. Hey guys, my name is Katherine Gable. And I'm Francesca Reed. I'm Liana Varjabedian. And today we're talking about one of my favorite topics, dresses. And I'm loving all sorts of dresses, and I know it's time for those Greek people on campus to go shopping. What's up, Ooh, Liana? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we have a banquet coming up as well, so my internet browser is very full of dresses, especially from our favorite websites like Nasty Gal, Lulu's, Forever 21. Mm -hmm. H&M because now they have online shopping, I know. Top yes. Shop, all of these amazing websites. And we pulled some of our favorite looks for you. Um, our number one look right now is the red dress. And I like this one in particular because it's sweet and sassy because red looks good on virtually everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. in not the same shade, but different shades. And it makes everyone look super hot, super sexy. And this dress in particular is really fun. Yeah, I love the color red on everybody. I think it's an amazing color. And girls say that they want to be sexy or they want to be sassy. And I think this, this is the perfect color that will, you know, give you or let you accomplish that. Because you can be sexy or you could be sassy. Like how this is kind of, it has the scalloped neckline, but it also has the little scalloped bottom. So it's a little bit sassy and sweet but the red makes it, you know, sexy. So, Liana, what do you think about this? Well, from personal experience, I know that men love red, especially on women. So, oh, personal? It, yeah, oh, personal. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my men, my men love red. <laughs> um, and I just really think that this makes you just stick out. You, I mean, you don't want to call too much attention, but I mean. Yeah, you do. I don't know. <laughs> you want to be that girl everyone's like, mm. no, I'm Ooh. just kidding. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, so I really love this dress, and um, you should splurge on this kind of look. Our next look is kind of a more sassier version of the red hotness, and this would be just low cut. And this is for the girl who's not afraid to make a statement, who's down for... Who's, who's not willing to blend in to the crowd. Let's just say this girl maybe not, might not have a boyfriend. Oh, okay. <laughs> or does have a boyfriend and wants to show it off to him. Is that you? Sure. Is that what you do? Sure, that is what I do. No, I think that any girl can pull this off. Well, I wouldn't say any girl because you, if you're not, you know, someone who wants to show off, you know, everything that you have, then obviously you don't want to wear something like this. But if you want to take a risk and you're definitely confident in yourself and, you know, the type of person that, who you are in your body, I think this is the most appropriate dress for that because, first of all, this neckline is completely in this yeah, year. Like, totally in. And so, first of all, you'll look fashionable because, well, like you're we trending. said, you're trending. And <laughs> you're just going to look amazing and beautiful and hot. So yeah. I agree. This is a huge trend lately. I just don't know if everybody can pull it off, yeah, no. though. No. Depends on your body type. If you got the curves and you got the flat stomach, then go yeah, for it. Yeah, but devil's advocate, this dress, because of the black and white contrast, that's actually purposefully there to make you look a little slimmer. And this is from Nasty Gal. So. Awesome. One of my favorite little websites for dresses. Yeah. What's <laughs> our, next? Our next is the cutest little dress. And this is for the girl who, who loves to be looking pretty and flirty and fashionable. And this, I love the cut. I think it's really abstract. I think the shoes are really fun because it's a really cool twist on the dress with a sequined platform. And white heels are like coming back. Mm -hmm. And so I love that yeah. too. Yeah. I think that this is, you know, perfect, for, like you said, for that girl who wants to be sweet and sassy and everything. But I think also it shows off that little 
um, keyhole in the front. I think that also makes it a little like, you know, snazzy. <laughs> like, oh but, yes, I'm innocent, but. But hey. <laughs> but um, I'm so. growing up. <laughs> So yeah, I think this this is very appropriate for someone who is just wanting to kind of be that cute and a little sassy type of girl. This is for the girl next door. Totally. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was a perfect line. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like this neutral. I like how they stuck with the neutrals, but also with this dress. You could add, obviously, a pop of color, lip color, Definitely different lip color shoes. Love the lip mm -hmm. idea. So uh, that's why I really like um, the nude and the neutral. It's easy to work yeah. with. The last dress is someone, for someone who is maybe more on a budget and wants something where they're going to look hot that night, but they can re-wear it and restyle it in a million different ways. Yeah, this is perfect because, first of all, you still have that deep V yeah. that we had in the, um, the, pr two pre or the previous dress before right. that one. And like, I think this is amazing because oh, yeah. you could totally wear this with a pair of really high heels and like she's pairing it with that choker necklace. I think right. that you, like this could be 20 bucks and you could make it look like you're $1,000. Right. Like, exactly. It's like the modern, almost famous dress. Yeah. Like it's pretty in 70s inspired, but it also has a take with this modern twist. But I'm not into the necklace, so don't do that, people. Yeah, no. don't do that exact one, yeah, but, like, but a chunky, statement. Chunky jewelry. Yes, a chunky statement. jewelry. But yeah, you could totally make this. You could wear this to a Grateful Dead concert or to your formal. It's oh. perfect. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that situation. Yeah. Um, and I also just really love her eyebrows. I know it's nothing to do with oh, Georgia, her dress, but her eyebrows This are model, amazing. Georgia, amazing. Yes. She's and she's rocking huge. the middle part. Yeah. Like not Love everybody it. can do that. Just one tip, girls, for eyebrows, like she was saying. <laughs> thick eyebrows are completely in. So keep them thick, girls, OK? Don't make them thin. You'll regret it later. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been fun, and we're looking forward to next week. Have fun at your dances. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, ladies. I know who I want to take me shopping in a couple of weeks. Looking for something to do this weekend that does not involve being outside at all? Hannah has the scoop on what to do around Milwaukee. Nothing marks the beginning of spring better than the start of baseball. But if you're not into sports, there's still plenty of things for you to do this weekend around Milwaukee. I'm Hannah Kirby, and tonight I will be showing you how you could be spending the upcoming weekend in this great city. It's that time of year again. I'm thrilled to say that Milwaukee Brewers baseball is back. This weekend, the Brewers are playing two exhibition games at Miller Park against the Kansas City Royals. Game time for Friday night is 7-10, with an afternoon game on Saturday at 1-10. After an off day, the Brewers kick off their 2014 season this Monday at 1-10 against the Atlanta Braves. Before you head to the game on Friday, why not go on Milwaukee's only pizza factory tour at Palermo's Pizza and Pizzeria. On this tour that begins at 1-30, you'll receive lunch and a souvenir. Palermo's is located at 3301 West Canal Street, and reservations are required. If you're not planning on checking out the game on Saturday, but are interested in trying some amazing food, the historic Third Ward Food Tour is this Saturday, beginning at 11.30 a.m. On this tour, you'll have the opportunity to learn more about the Third Ward while sampling foods from some of the surrounding restaurants. The tour starts on the corner of Water Street and St. Paul Avenue, and tickets must be purchased ahead of time to attend this event. If you're not ready to make the transition from basketball to baseball just yet, the Milwaukee Bucks take on the Miami Heat Saturday at 7.30 p.m. at the BMO Harris Bradley Center. Over at the Rave, the Knockout Kings kickboxing is Friday night at 6 p.m. Two concerts are also happening at the Rave this weekend. The rapper Juicy J is performing with Travis Scott and Project Pat opening. Showtime is Saturday at 8 p.m. The national singer-songwriter Charlie Worsham is performing at the same time on a different stage on Saturday as well. Whether you're looking to get a head start on the upcoming baseball season or just want to try some new foods, Milwaukee is full of fun events that will definitely make your weekend one to remember. Until next time, I'm Hannah Kirby. Have a fantastic weekend. Now back to you, Kira. Thank you, Hannah. You are always so great for packing my schedule with fun things to do. We're going to take a quick break, but up next, we have a live performance. We have a very special guest performer tonight. Please welcome Kimberly Brown with her original song titled, Not You, which could possibly be on her next album.
Yes, yeah, I'll okay. here at the other side yeah. of you. done I killed it between us you know I didn't mean to I didn't see to there won't be an us this all was a bust this all was a bust this all was a bust but I want someone to love me I'd like someone to love me I need someone to love me but it most certainly is not you. Not you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly, for that wonderful performance. Kimberly actually has some exciting news she wants to share with us. She is releasing her album next week. So can you tell us a little bit about that? I would love to. Um, so yeah, it's been such a long process. We've been recording since September. And finally, it's come to a culmination. And yeah, it's going to be up for sale. Um, I play with a guitarist. His name is Lorenzo Rapani. And awesome. we usually play out together. So he's on the album, and um, we had a drummer and a bassist. So the album has a full band sound, but when I play out, I just have a guitarist with me. So awesome. and then I play guitar too. Yeah, I'm so excited! Like awesome. I cannot believe it. It has nine songs on it, all written by me and composed by me. Um, so I'm just. I can't believe that it's happening. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. And to promote your album, I hear you're also having a debut party. So can yeah. you give us the details on that? Yup. It just all happens so fast, like I said, and just put together a party. I had a gig, and I made it into a debut party, yeah. basically. Why not, right? I know. <laughs> so um, that's going to be um, in Waukesha at Key West, Wisconsin, um, right in downtown Waukesha, and it's going to be from 6 to 9 o'clock awesome. on Saturday, April 5th. Great. So my CD will be out for sale, and it's amazing. And we can expect you to perform at your release party, right? Yep, okay. yep. Awesome. We'll be performing the songs, as well as other ones that will hopefully be on the next album. Awesome. <laughs> A good motivation to come get the next one, too. I know. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Kimberly. We Absolutely. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. I'm looking forward to hearing the whole album. We're going to take another quick break, but stay tuned because we have girl problems and pop culture coming your way. I do love making lists, but more importantly, I love hearing and reading lists. Lucky for you and me, our favorite ladies on Girl Problems have a major list coming your way. Hey everyone, welcome to Girl Problems, a segment where we don't talk smack, we just state facts. Okay, <laughs> I'm Jessie. And I'm Azure. And Kippy Fabulous could not make it tonight, but we will take over for the evening. Earlier this week, an interesting article came across my newsfeed entitled, 50 Things Women Should Know About Men. The title alone piqued my interest, so of course I checked it out. And according to some of my guy friends, some of these are actually quite true. Mm -hmm. And I thought it'd be fun to go over this list and the ladies of girl problems to give our two cents. So we're going to try to tackle as much of these on the list as we have time for. Okay, so the first one on the list says, women should know that you got to stay away from his internet search history. If, if you do go browsing and see where he's been, you will regret it. There are some things you just can't unsee. So, why do you think that mm. is? I've made that mistake before. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, what happened? Um, let's just say that he's, he had some very X-rated images, or mm. he likes certain sites to go and browse, so mm -hmm. his little duo up and down. So, I mean, like, personally, I think it's disgusting and repulsing. Like, I don't need to look in your internet browser to right. know that you're doing it in the first place. Right, exactly. But if you can't handle it, I suppose. Right. Mm -hmm. And there was, um, and I was bringing this list up at work last night, and Dan Shergan, who we all know, and another um, gentleman who works on the store, we were all discussing it, and he was saying, you know, for some reason, all guys do it, and if a girl does go searching for it, then that's a trust issue. And then clearly there's something about him that we don't trust, is why we would go searching in the first place. Maybe we're just curious. It doesn't necessarily mean we don't trust you, but whatever. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Next one says, you can't change him. 
I know that you intellectually think that on some level you may be able to pull it off, but you can't. He'll figure out that you're trying to change him and resent you for it. Love him the way he is or not at all. I would agree with that one. I would agree with that like, one. That, I think that goes both ways. Like when you get into a relationship, you know what you're getting into. So uh -huh. don't go into it with the intent thinking you're, he's going to come out a different man. I mean, you can make some alterations because I see, make alterations. But see, some <laughs> girls think, though, they're like they date the bad boys or the ones that are, you know, they're jerks because they think that they can change him. See, that I never understood because I ain't trying to change nobody. That is too much work. Okay, if you come all with all the issues, I ain't trying to do all that. Anybody got time for that? Okay, no. So you is <laughs> like, I'm trying to change nobody. But uh, so I would agree with that, that you can't change change a man so that one check I agree number three you shouldn't take it personally when he checks out other women <coughs> unless okay. he's drooling let it go it's a reflex mm. and he can't help it no. yes you can you can help it what are you talking about okay no I that I can't, even, I can't even say Don't the statement that, that I want to say, but I wish a Jigga would. I wish, <laughs> I really wish that he would try to check out another female while I'm in his presence. Thank you. I don't care what he does when Thank I'm you. not there. Right. But if I'm standing there out of respect for me, I will go and address him and her in the same mouthpiece. I do right? not care. And what I'm saying is, though, especially if you're with your woman, use your peripherals, okay? I mean, if, I mean, if you must look, why, do you, why would you be talking to your woman and then, like, D dramatically look at another woman, okay? A real guy who has it together, he could be looking at his woman dead in the eye and see a gorgeous <laughs> woman in his peripherals and not break eye contact. Okay! That is how a man should do it if you really have to look. But if you automatically turn, and why would you have to look at the dollar menu hamburger walking across exactly. when you got the lame mignon exactly. right in front of you? Okay! All right. That's so, what we're talking about, the Cavalier thank you. and the Porsche. You right. already know what you're riding with. Exactly. Google. Okay, next one. He will choose his friends over you. They've been with him for way longer than you have, and no matter how much he loves the regular, mm -hmm, he'll sacrifice it if it means you're trying to 86 his buddies. The cookie? Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think? I mean, personally, I'm not one to like want to try to break that bomb. Yeah, I would He needs up. his time. I need he needs my his time. Boys, I need I'm my not, girls. I'm exactly. not trying to be up in his face like that. I don't like being like feeling claustrophobic in a relationship. Right. So I understand that one. I would understand that one too. Like there's a, well, I don't know if I can say that word on TV, so I'm not gonna say the phrase. But bros, before you you know what word I mean. So that's basically <laughs> what that means. And I would understand that because like everybody needs the friends of the same gender. We need our ladies' nights and the girls' nights, and the guys need to go out and have their boys' nights. You know, so that's understandable. Mm -hmm. I check that one. Number five, this one I understand as well. Never criticize his mother. If he wants to do it and you commiserate with him, that's fine. But if you're the one who brings it up, well, I can't say the next word because it's a cuss word, but <laughs> watch out. And that I understand because that's family. Like, I can talk trash about my family all I want because that's my family. But if uh, someone else says it, that's when it's an issue. So, I, like, I would agree with that one. I mean, yes, I agree. And at the same time, I wouldn't even talk trash about my family to a person that I'm in a relationship mm -hmm. with because it's a reflection of you and who you are. Just as, you know, like, as the statement says that, by dating another woman, a man usually sees qualities, you know, of their mother in that other woman. So True. if you talk about his mother, you can guarantee for a fact that that relationship is not going to last long. Especially if he is mama's boy. Especially. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, perfect timing because that was the top five. And that is all the time we have this evening. But we will see you next week with more Hot Topics. I'm Jesse. I'm Najere. And this has been Girl, Girl Problems. Problems. Deuces. Thank you, ladies. If anything is close to perfect, it is always your comments. Up next, we will hear from Lexi, who will be recapping some recent pop culture favorites. Divergent opened this past weekend and topped the box office by grossing $56 million. The movie, an adaptation of Veronica Roth's best-selling young adult novel, stars Shane Lee Woodley, Theo James, and Miles Teller. The film holds the record for the second largest opening of 2014, just behind the Lego movie. Sources have already confirmed that a sequel to Divergent is planned. This past Sunday, March 23rd, Myla Kunis announced that her and fiance Ashton Kutcher will be expecting their first child. The couple, just recently engaged, are excited to welcome their child into the family. In other couple news, Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin announced that they will be separating after 11 years of marriage. The couple, parents to Apple and Moses, announced their decision on the GOOP website. Both Paltrow and Martin said they had been working on the relationship for a little over a year and decided that separating was the best option. The couple will continue to co-parent their children. And last, but certainly not least, Kevin Bacon is sweeping the internet after his latest appearance on Jimmy Fallon's The Tonight Show. With his stunning recreation of the final dance number to the movie Footloose, Bacon graced the stage with his impressive moves. The sketch left fans from all over the world believing that Kevin Bacon still really does have the moves. 
This is Lexi Dahlberg with your weekly dose of pop art. Thank you, Lexi. As big of an Ashton and Mila supporter as I am, I have to say I'm a little sad that Ashton is officially off the market again. That is all that we have tonight for you, but we hope that you stay very warm this weekend. This is Marquette Live. I'm Kira Collins.